And that's where all these strange colors come from. You go into darkest Africa, you ain't gonna find no yellow folk like this. You won't find no high yellows there. As such, not as original Africans. Okay? Now, now pick up on this. This is a marvelous thing that this man is saying, that this man is saying to us. And we need to realize this. I said, he says that more than 600,000 men, 20 years and old, and up left it, left Egypt, which must have meant an additional two or three million women and children. Since the Jews were slaves, their women were undoubtedly concubines of the Egyptian and must have produced mixed offspring. After more than 400 years of slavery, almost every trace of the first 70 Jews must have been lost, together with their culture, sound just like black folk in America. Amen. Same thing. Okay. After more than 400 years of slavery, almost every trace of the first 70 Jews must have been lost, together with their culture, thus Jewish culture was Egyptian culture. Mm. To get an idea of what must have happened to those original 70 Jews, think of what has happened to Negroes in the United States who came here in hundreds of thousands over a period of centuries and not all at once as the Jews did in Egypt. In other words, the 70 went to Egypt at one time, but the blacks were not brought in at one time. They were brought in over quite a few hundred years. Watch this now. Negroes are so Americanized that were it not for their color, one would forget that they ever came from Africa. Now watch this. The Falashas, or black Jews of Ethiopia, are probably very ancient. They claim lineal descent from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob call themselves Beta Israel, which means the chosen people, and observe the Passover. End of quote. In Sex and Race, volume 1, page 28, Mr. Rogers says, and I quote, increasingly, it is being said in the most informed scientific circles that the Negro was the ancestor of the human race. Henry Fairfield Osborne, late head of the American Museum of Natural History, who undoubtedly was a black man, uh, head of the, I said head of the American Museum of Natural History, who had himself a strong tinge of white fanaticism, said Negroid stock is even more ancient than Caucasian or Mongolian man. Henry Fairfield Osborne was a white man. Now, from Man Rises to Parnesius, page 201, Princeton, New Jersey, 1928. Men of the Old Stone Age, quoting, Men of the Old Stone Age, page 262, 278, and 279, 1918. Mr. Rogers goes on to say, Griffith Taylor says, and I quote, a major principle of ecology tells us that the Negrito was therefore the earliest to develop of the five races. From environment, and I quote, from environment and race, page 230, London, 1927, environment and nation, on page 87, Chicago, printed in Chicago, 1936, Rogers continues. There were several of these put together. It might sound a little confusing, but you get the tape and you'll be able to go back and get it. Rogers continues. Professor W.K. Gregory, in the illustrated front piece of his book, entitled, and I quote, Our Face from Fish to Man, end of quote, gives the Tasmanian Negro as the first man. Rene Verneau, head of the Paleontological Institute, Paleontological Institute of Paris says, and I quote, recent discoveries seem to indicate that the Negro element preceded the white and the yellow everywhere, end of quote. From, and I quote, Huxley Memorial Lectures for 1924. See, this stuff, they've been knowing about this stuff you didn't get none of this in school. 
They didn't tell the black folk about it, and they didn't tell the white folks about it. 1924. Huxley Memorial Lecture for 1924 on page 20. Rogers, see, Rogers is a historian, so he's putting all these different things together. All this is in his book, but he's quoting from other authorities and authors, so that's, that's why I try to keep all this together. Huxley Memorial Lectures for 1924, page 20, Rogers continues, and I quote, Griffith Taylor adds in support that the Negritos, or Little Negroes, were the first in Europe. After the Neanderthal, a near-human Negroid type, and that the Negritos introduced their culture all over the world. The original color of primitive man was black. He says, now, in a book entitled, going to another place now, in a book entitled, The Greek Historians, by Goldolphin, copyright 1942, Random House Incorporated, in the book called Herodotus, chapter 104 and 105, on pages 130 and 131. Now, Herodotus was considered the father of history. Now watch this. Quoting Herodotus, who, by the way, lived 500 years before Christ and was called the father of history. Quoting, there can be no doubt that the Colchians are an Egyptian race. Before I heard any men mention of the fact from others, I had remarked it myself. This is Herodotus talking. After the thought had struck me, I made inquiries on the subject both in Colchis and in Egypt. And I found that the Colchians had a more distinct recollection of the Egyptians than the Egyptians had of them. Colchis, this is my insertion now. Colchis, by the way, was an ancient province in Asia east of the Black Sea. Going on to quote Herodotus. Still, the Egyptians said that they believed the Colchians to be descended from the army of Sesostris. My own conjectures were founded first, oh, get this now, first on the fact that they are black-skinned and have woolly hair, which certainly amounts to but little since several other nations are so too, but I further and more especially on the circumstance that the Colchians, the Egyptians, and the Ethiopians are the only nations who have practiced circumcision from the earliest times. The Phoenicians and the Syrians of Palestine themselves confess that they learned the custom of the Egyptians. And the Syrians who dwell about the rivers Thermodon and Parthenius as well as their neighbors, the Macronians, say that they have recently adopted it from the Colchians. Now, these are the only nations who use circumcision, and it is plain that they all imitate herein the Egyptians. With respect to the Ethiopians, indeed, I cannot decide whether they learned, learned the practice of the Egyptians or the Egyptians of them. It is undoubtedly a very ancient date in Ethiopia, but that the others derived their knowledge of it from Egypt is clear to me from the fact that the Phoenicians, when they come to have commerce with the Greeks, cease to follow the Egyptians in this custom and allow their children to remain uncircumcised. I will add a further proof of the identity of the Egyptians and the Colchians. These two nations weave their linen in exactly the same way. And there is a way, and this is a way entirely unknown to the rest of the world. They also in their whole mode of life and in their language resemble one another. The Colchian linen is called by the Greeks Sardonian, while that which comes from Egypt is known as Egyptian. In his book entitled, that's the end of, end of quote, in his book entitled From Superman to Man by J.A. Rogers, copyright 1968 by Helga M. Rogers, page 18 and 19, historian J.E. Rogers says, Aristotle, in his Physiognomy, chapter 6, distinctly mentions the Ethiopians as having 
woolly hair and the Egyptians as being black-skinned. Every movie you have seen about Egypt, Pharaoh, dogs and the cats are all white. <laughs> the only time you see a black is when he's a slave. All right. Now, <clears throat> uh, Rogers goes on to say, and I quote, Count M.C. de Volney, author of The Ruins of Empire, says, the ancient Egyptians were real Negroes of the same species as the other present natives of Africa. End of quote. De Volney further states in the same work, says Rogers, quoting again, to the race of Negroes, oh, watch this now, to the race, now this de Volney was a Frenchman, so he'd be classified as white. Okay, now watch this now. And I'm quoting, to the race of Negroes, the object of our extreme contempt, we owe our arts, sciences, and even the very use of speech. End of quote. They didn't teach us this in school. The only thing they taught us is that we came over on slave ships and picked cotton. That's about it. I mean, really. You know, overall as a whole. All right, now. Admittedly, the references we have looked at thus far could certainly be classified as past history. So let's bring it closer to our day and time. In an article in the Washington Post, another Negro-owned and operated publication, the Washington Post, copyright 1994, the Washington Post, November 16, 1994, Wednesday, final edition, byline, by Boyce Rensberger, Washington Post staff writer, I quote, the overwhelming conclusion of anthropologists, in short, is that no physical features distinguish any race, not even a combination of traits that will do the job. We all descended from black people. Bye. We walk by faith, not by sight.